I want you to think about your favorite meal on a beautiful plate, beautifully presented, appetizing. You want to just dig in. But if somebody brought you that, rolled up a trash can with your entire meal tossed into it, it wouldn't be so appetizing, would it? And probably you wouldn't even eat it. What's going on when we fall for all of these toxic relationships is we're taking our favorite meal in a dumpster, in a trash can. But there was just one or two things that was on the plate that was tossed in that garbage can that we focus on. We get laser focused. It's almost like there's something in our brain that clicks. And just those one or two things that this individual meets is got you all in. We're not seeing all of the trash that our meal is dumped on top of, but we are just focusing on those one or two things that see, seem to soothe or meet from our perspective something that was missing. Now, I know that was a really harsh way to bring this, but I, I had to come to terms with this myself, and that's what I saw, that, that I was so starved out on some level, now, not on all levels, but on some level, I was so starved that I was willing to eat out of a dumpster in relationships. Totally threw myself in, neglected myself, my own needs on every level, and it was focused on them, 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 them. And inevitably, all of the things that I had ignored focusing on one or two things would eventually slap me back to reality snap out of it because i would be in a situation where i was devastated emotionally and when i was being abused i was devastated physically in almost all of those situations it left me devastated financially i was just devastated and when i got in that desperate devastated state was always the point at which I finally cut ties. We don't have to get in a devastated state to finally cut ties with toxic individuals. You need to think about what did I miss coming along? What am I starving for in a man? Now, I'm going to, I've never share this with anybody else. It's a minor thing, but I need to share this with you so that you can get a good, clear understanding of how this played out. So I had a boyfriend. Yeah, he drank, he smoked and everything. And he wasn't really all that on an intellectual tip, but he was funny and we enjoyed each other, right? What was going on when I was married is is my husband wasn't all in you know public displays of affection. He wasn't huggy, cuddly. Uh, I was just used to getting pushed away on all levels. So after I divorced him and I was in a relationship with this gentleman, we'll call him Joe. I didn't pay attention to how often he got drunk. I didn't pay attention to how much he was smoking. I didn't pay attention to how much below uh, what I was used to on an intellectual conversation tip that he was. One day, he was getting dressed. He was getting ready to step out, and he was putting on his watch. Now, the way it would normally play for me is that I would get pushed away. No, baby, not right now. I'm, I got to get ready. But this guy, he had his arm around my shoulders. And instead of pushing me away, he just went ahead with his arm still around my shoulders. He went ahead and put his watch on. Now that imprinted something on my brain because that was something I was starving for. Somebody that wasn't going to constantly push me away. Somebody for whom a minor task like putting on a watch was not enough for him not to put his, keep his arm around my shoulder and keep me pulled close to him. Now that was something I was starving for, but I held on to that. And I was in that relationship way too dead gum long. Okay, that's a minor way for me to show you that. It could be anything with you. It could be somebody that 
It's just one or two things, whatever that is for you, that keep you there because you've been starving. And so even though that relationship is a dumpster fire, you stay in it because there were one or two minor things that you were starving for. It's what we do when we've been traumatized. We settle for less. We tend to razor focus on certain things that imprinted our brains as a result of past trauma. What I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to do without going through a thing that whatever the breakup was, it was all your fault. If you wouldn't have this, that, or the other, they would have that. Why did they reject? No, we can't go through this exercise like this. This exercise need to ob be objectively focused on what it is in past relationships that you did not like and make a list. When we look back, we see a million different signs that we totally ignore while that reality was slapping us in the face. What was it in those relationships, whether it was uh, a character flaw or a bad habit or he, whatever they did not fulfill for you as far as your personal values, um, as far as how you want to be treated, go back over all your past relationships and as things come to mind, write them down on a list. Once you do that, if you see them going forward, do not settle. Don't eat out the dumpster, okay? Then I want you to write a list of all of the things in past relationships. Now, I'm not asking you to draw a list of your knight in shining armor that you want to come rescue you. Just in past relationships, what are the good things? Because even though somebody's a knucklehead, because they're human, there's some good in them, okay? So... Even if it's those things that you were laser focused on to the exclusion of reality, write it down. What things do you want in a relationship based only on the good things you've experienced in past relationships? You're going to write down what did you like? What did you enjoy? What did, what did you feel was worthwhile? Whether it's their character or the way they talk, whatever it is, you're going to make a separate list. Now, the reason why I don't do one, two, three, four, five type of stuff very often is because when you do these lists, it's not going to be a one and done. You're not going to sit down today and write a whole list and that's going to be the comprehensive list. What's going to happen is you're going to get started on both of those lists. OK, and as you move through life and you go through life and over time, you think of something, go write it down on the appropriate list. OK. Then what I want you to do is remember the good. And remember the bad. And when you get into another relationship where you find yourself, you know this now, so you're going to be able to catch yourself doing this. And when you see a relationship where for every ounce of pleasure, there's a pound of pain, you need to cut and run and cut your losses. See, this is all about cutting your losses before you put your heart into a relationship because once you put your heart into a relationship the pulling away is going to be tougher and tougher i'll give you a link to a, a little ebook that you can download that's going to tell you what to look for i guarantee you will see most of these things within three to six months and when you hear or see these things, you need to run, not walk, run. Don't get caught up in dumpster dive mode in your mind. Dumpster dive relationships are not working for us going forward, okay? And when you see certain things, they telling you something. They're telling you something about that person's character. And remember this. Anybody can hold their own and pretend for a certain amount of time. 
but that pretense that it's going to begin to crack like like crack glass and fall down all around them and expose their true characters so i'll put a link to that ebook here and when you read that that's going to tell you how to conduct yourself on a date don't talk too much okay don't be telling them your whole story don't tell them about how joe blow did you wrong and how i ain't never this and i ain't never that you got to hold your cards close to the vest don't tell people how to manipulate you because if a guy is out there just for one thing or really doesn't care about you and think he can play you, if he's a narcissist, trust me, you do not want to give him his doggone playbook. Okay? Anyway, that's it for today. I'm gonna I'm not gonna hold you any longer. I just wanted to share that with you. And if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. And if you like the content here, please subscribe. And maybe like the video, talk to me. Let's go back and forth here in the comments. And if you know of anybody who could use this information, please share it. The more the merrier. Anyway, I'm Dr. Linda F. Williams. And always remember that your greatest power is realizing the truth of who you are. Know that truth.